Hey guys, welcome to Bronx Porch Homestead. And as you can see behind me, we are having a serious winter sleet um, weather. As a matter of fact, it's supposed to snow as a and it's turning into um, sleet that has frozen everything. So there's icicles on everything that um, is in the backyard here. I did not put any salt down, so I am going to try to attempt those stairs one by one. I will not be filming because I need to have full hands on those, on those uh, rails. So I am doing a vlog here because even an urban homesteader has responsibilities when it comes to taking care of any kind of animals that you are, take, that you are taking care of. Um, we're gonna feed the hens. I bought them some collards, give them a couple of minutes of my time. And then I do have to give water to Charlie and Holly, the rabbits along with some food. I will, be, I will not be letting out the rabbits because it's slippery. It's just ice all over the floor. So I am gonna be careful um, and I will film from inside. But other than that, it's gonna take me a couple of minutes to go up those stairs and across to where the hens are. So see you in a bit. Okay, we are in the hen house and I'm giving them some collards. One of them seems to be very vocal. And that's the reason why I came out, because I thought there was something going on. The other day I did carry this little girl here. I call her Blondie, because she has that Blondie look but I followed along what I saw at, at the videos when I was checking out for how to carry a, a chicken. It's really important that we handle our chickens, you know, I mean, some people I know just have hens, but they don't carry them. Um, you really should, because if there's anything wrong with them, you have to be able to pick them up and, or you have to be able to move one away from another if they're bullying each other, you know, that kind of thing. I don't see any plucked feathers here. Seems like they're getting along somewhat besides the pecking order. Other than that, they look quite healthy. Yeah, she's the one that's a little vocal these days. So. Oh, they took it down. Means it's on the floor. So I have my coat on. It really doesn't feel that cold in here at all, which is great. Yeah, it doesn't feel that cold. We did put, I um, just want to mention, this had a sharp edge here. We did put tape on it because I could just see the breast of a chicken going on there and cutting themselves. So we did it for both the top and the bottom, and then we also did it on the other side as well. You definitely want to protect your hens because, you know, they get hurt. You're not going to just let them be, you know. Uh, we did plug in the water heater again, so there is water. The water's not frozen, which is great. But Missy here, yeah, she seems to be a little verbal. Look at what she's looking at. What's the matter with you, huh? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, I see. She's seeing herself in the mirror. Oh, that's too funny. Yeah, th this is kind of like a mirror effect, huh? The other thing is, I like that even though they're not using it for eggs yet, there is straw in there, which provides them with a bit of heat. So the temperature is in its 
um, upper 30s. But regardless, it's cold out and everything is icing up. Yeah, I'm glad that they are chewing that away. And I'm glad Blondie has a little chance over there because they keep pecking her out. Maybe because she was molting before? I don't know. They do have um, food in their five gallon container. Yeah, it's funny. The this hen keeps going into all the boxes. Okay, so I'm not sure what's going on there with her. But I'm about to leave my hens and walk over to the uh, rabbits. Again, I need to kind of stop filming here because I've got to be careful. And um, see how they're doing. Okay, everything you can see is pretty icy. I'm not gonna let him out. Um, yeah, I know, sweetie. I just put some water in there. But as you can see, that uh, even the bin is full of ice. The ground may not look like there's a lot of snow, but guys, that's a sheet of ice on there. And I was very careful to, you know, come across. So I had to walk from there. And the trees are covered with ice on them. They're a little noisy today, the girls. I guess they're just as annoyed about this weather. All right, well, let me go back to giving these guys food and then putting the cover back on them. Um, my, uh, my hands are frozen. So I do keep food here and I notice there's no hay in there and that's because um, it's on order. So I kind of ran out of hay and now I gotta wait till it gets delivered today and then I'll just bring over the I'll bring it over. All right, guys. Okay, there you go. I had to put it there because I can't reach over. Oh, I think Charlie, is he going to get it? or? Oh, there he goes. Now he knows. <laughs> That's so funny. He's like, wait a minute. You don't normally put it there. All right, I'm going to let these guys be. I'm going to turn back around, close this up warm up my hands, put on a pot of tea, and uh, I'll come out again later on just to check things out. I don't know if I'll go all the way up here though. All right, see you later, folks. Okay, well that was adventurous today, huh? All right, so we fed the hens, right? We fed the rabbits, come back inside. Let me turn on the light here. Okay, take off my hat. Yes, I know. I am wearing a <laughs> wearing a tank top because inside is very warm, but outside it's freezing cold. So, all right, 
put some tea on. Okay, I wanted to share that with you um, because when you have a homestead, small or large, I've seen some of the large homesteads that um, I like to tune into and it's a lot of work. And you know, these hosts that um, these homesteaders, they go out there 5 a.m. in the morning, 6 a.m. in the morning if they have full-time work outside. Um, some of them just get up and they have a massive amount of um, work that they have to do because of the size of the farm. But even in a little urban homestead, a little tiny farm like mine, you, you know, we still have res responsibilities, right? To so get up and see how the... Um, see how the animals are, are doing and okay so I have hens and I have rabbits you know they're still um, domestic little livestock that I have to take care of so it's cute to have animals but you've got to take care of them even on days like today it's also a perfect time to have some tea after all that work So the other thing I wanted to update you on is um, I had a conversation with um, someone who does beekeeping in New York City. So there were two major companies uh, that I looked up online and I'm excited because I still want to continue to produce and try to get away a little bit from the consumer side. I, I, it won't. It's impossible to be a hundred percent producer in an in an urban city, um, in the Bronx, New York City. Uh, f first of all, for example, the rainwater capture. That's not something that I can do because my gutters literally go out into the sidewalk. Um, there's no. They don't come out and then the water runs. They are built into the pipe. Hey, Katie. Hi. Uh, those boots. We're doing I, the vlog. Oh, hi. We, those boots, <laughs> I'm pretty sure are fake because you know that's horrible smell. Yeah. So I looked on Amazon reviews and everyone was like, the chemical, it smells like someone spray painted them, like it's the chemical smell. And then they're at, like, everyone was being like, these boots are fake, these boots are fake. So I just returned them. Good. Have to, they have like this thing where like they're going to refund me because they were like 80 bucks. And then I... We have to go to the Whole Foods in, in Ridge Hill sometimes before, sometime before March 25th. And literally all I have to do is bring the boots there. They package it and send it out for free. I don't have to, you just drop it off there. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's do that. So, oh, well, that's a shame, you know? They're definitely fake. I, I was literally, like, I wiped them down and, like, even black stuff was coming off the boots. And they smell like chemicals. Wow. Everything that touches them smells like chemicals. So Did I'm like, I can't even wear these boots. Wow. Even if they were fake and they didn't smell like that, I would be fine with it, but... Yeah. No, we have to be conscious of the stuff that we buy in terms of what we wear. Yeah. You know, like, just, we have to see what it is that the things are made out of. Yeah, I don't know what it, you it know? smells like chemical. They're in this room. Okay. I don't want them to get ruined outside because I'm... Did we throw away the box to that? I did. Oh! But I think it's fine. But did they say that you have to return it with no, the box? Okay. they didn't. No. Well, well, that's just a fake. Okay. Real life kicking in. Um, so, yeah. So, I did contact this person. We talked about bees, um, as I was saying. And that's another thing that, as an urban homesteader, I think I can do. And we are... Hi, David. Hi. We're doing a vlog. Say hi. It's a crazy day. Hi, everybody. <laughs> He's sorting after after I went out there and ki and almost I, killed myself. I thought you were still out there. No. So it's just something to look forward to, as I was saying. <laughs> Back to B talk, um, and we did do a Zoom walkthrough of the backyard, and it seems like I can have two beehive houses um one of them is not recommended because if anything is going on with the one house then you lose the bees and also the bees don't have a chance to transition into another house as well the other thing is it's good to compare 
one with another because if there's something going on with the beehive house then you could see the other house and see what's going on in terms of maybe calling for help um so we do have a person coming in in the middle of march just to do an actual visual on site of the home and also to check out other areas because maybe i didn't show them every part of what we have in the back i know we definitely cannot have it in the front because there's a lot of movement so i did choose a location where the barbecue stand is because that's actually going to leave and no we don't barbecue it, it was just ordered by my neighbor um but we don't use it so we do want to get rid of it and it's in the corner where there's nobody and even on the other side there is no one there that uses that corner um because this is a very tight environment so even though new york city allows us to have bees there are some restrictions and with all you know with all right is that you have to make sure that these bees don't become a nuisance to other people when they open up their windows if they happen to walk under or by so these are all things that need to be taken into consideration but again dreaming of spring coming my seedlings are doing well we'll do another update on that um, in another vlog um, but at the same time I went online did a little research on bees so this is all what's going on while it's sleeting the other thing I'm thinking about is actually taking a master beekeeping course. Um, I see that we can do it online, and then they can. How how is the salting? Good. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. So it's something that we could do on you know online, and they do have a list of resources where we are able to contact so that maybe, um, you know, there's some volunteer work that can be done there so that we can get hands-on um, practice with beehives and uh, be comfortable in the area. So I say we because I always think that there is others that are doing the same thing and um, I think we should get used to saying the word we. You know, a, a lot of things can be done together and it's not so scary. All right, my little one is going to work and I am going to knock off for now, have my tea. I'll see you the next time. Oh,